Hey everyone, uh, Dang Tachia from the Today Minutes Work, bringing you a 1 vs 1 replay of the uh, game uh, War Game European Escalation. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's, I think it's on the Hammerhead map. So yes, yeah, this is um, Max, I know a difference in that frame right there. Interesting. Well, in either case, uh, yeah, it's an uh, interesting little uh, War Game NATO vs uh, Warsaw Pact during uh, the uh, Cold War. And uh, yeah, basically put, um, this will be my. Uh, First, uh. Wow, does it really need to look like that? Interesting. Okay, anyway. This will be my first, um. commentary for this, and, uh, yeah, basically my first, um. close game that I had. Basically, the games before that were a bit one sided, but I uh, thought I might as well show you this game, given that, yeah, it was actually the first uh, game that I had uh, that was uh, very close between me and my opponent. And, yeah, in this case, I believe I'll be playing as uh, NATO, and my opponent is uh, going to be playing as uh, Warsaw Pact. And I think there's um, yeah, there's no actually to have um, mirror matchups in this game, so it's always NATO versus Pact. And uh, yeah, the mode we're playing is um, yeah, just standard ranked game, and uh, I think it's called Destruction, where basically yeah, you get points for um, destroying your enemy's units. Although keep in mind that um, you need resources in order to buy units, which means yeah, holding these uh, little control zones here. And uh, yeah, basically put um, yeah, you need uh, command vehicles to do that, such as uh, the command vehicle that's going to appear there. A little uh, star next to it, as you can see, and uh, yeah, you also need um, ways to reinforce. So, as you can see, the arrow in the reinforcements, and yeah, you also capture those uh, related zones as well. So, yeah, basically, we're in the deployment phase where we're deploying our forces, and I believe we'll be starting at some point, hopefully. And yeah, because I've got it recording at 30 frames per second. Um, yeah, there we go, that's pretty nice, but anyway, yeah, got it recording at 30 frames per second, um, set it to. So it does restrict the uh, frame rate. It's interesting. It doesn't seem to smooth to uh, get around, or rather to move them around the map as uh, as um, smoothly. But it almost looks like as if it's less than 30 frames a second. But I don't know. Probably not. Probably because I'm just used to seeing it a bit um, smoother. And yeah, so yeah, pretty nice game. Got uh, plenty of uh, different elements to to think about when you're playing, such as yeah, differing elevation and all that line of sight, so I'm able to shoot up um, you know, over hills and all that for example, also forests providing a bit of cover in terms of uh, sight range as well as um, yeah, protection from uh, enemy fire, and uh, yeah, this game yeah, you get um, many uh, types of ground units available to uh, both Warsaw and uh, NATO, and uh, yeah, you also get a um, so nice section of uh, helicopters as well, so it's also war game uh, air lens battle coming out I think uh, next year, and uh, yeah, promises to add um, much bigger battlefields and uh, yeah, I think aircraft as well, as in uh, fixed wing air airplanes. So, yes, yeah, so maps as you can see are pretty uh, big. We'll just go to satellite view. So, there you go, pretty big indeed. And yeah, you know, it's also engage each other at uh, real, well, pretty much more or less realistic. Um, oh, there we go, realistic uh, ranges. And yeah, there we go, looks like the aim has finally started. And uh, yeah, it's just as well, this game's got a replay function because yeah, most of the time you're going to be playing it incredibly zoomed out. But uh, yeah, if you have a look at um, even just basic units like this anti-aircraft unit, it's got a range of uh, over two kilometers basically. It's twin auto cannons, and of course, units such as the uh, anti-aircraft missile uh, unit would um, yeah have a range of 3,850 meters. So that's pretty uh, big to say the least. Same for that one. So yes, and let's see, yeah, tanks you can see got mass, well, they can have pretty massive ranges as well. So main gun. This one, for example. T-64B, a bit, bit more of a fancier tank, but um, yeah, it's got a um, range of over two kilometers, so... A far cry from games like uh, Men of War, where the tank's got a range like uh, of 150 meters. <laughs> uh, but at the same time, yeah, as you can see, the scale is way, way different. And yeah, because of the scale, um, and usually the amount of units you have on the ground and in the air at any one time, yeah, things are a bit abstracted, so yeah, you units, um, can, well, can generally enter forests and all that. Uh, they go a little bit more slowly, unless if they're infantry, and uh, yeah, tanks and vehicles and all that, so they get, um... Occasionally, uh, they uh, might get stuck in mud and all that when the forest, and of course, yeah, the vehicles can't go through actual buildings, while soldiers, yeah, can just wander through them themselves, and yeah, I believe, yeah, buildings would be uh, used as a heavy cover for uh, infantry, and yeah, basically obstructing uh, view of the um, enemy, and uh, yeah, also providing a bit of a uh, solid cover for your infantry, so, yeah, infantry, yeah, usually don't do too well out in the open, although apparently I've heard of cases where um, there have been infantry rushes and such, interesting. In any case, let's have a look. Here we go, get a nice little close-up look. 
So here we go, yeah, it looks to be pretty smooth at 30 frames per second. And I don't know if I actually mentioned this earlier, but yeah, I think this is the only game I have actually that um, actually stresses my... Um So yeah, I'm still pretty new at this game, as you can see. But, um, well, I still reckon I should be able to provide a commentary as to what's going on here. And uh, yeah, basically, as you can see, we're seeing a perspective of uh, both players at the moment. I'm seeing uh, enemy units on the field and uh, my units on the field as well. Can just switch that to me, so what do I see? Nothing, and my opponent doesn't see anything yet either. So yeah, as you can see, yeah, we're just um, deploying our guys around. He's got his recon guys there, the guys with little uh, binoculars next to the... Uh, Next to the um, unit's names, that's the PT-71. It's got the um, rather annoying ATGM, although with crap accuracy, thank God. Nice little main gun and the uh, yeah, average armor. What's this PT-71 on the others as well? So just got a couple to spot there, and uh, yeah. Also, you can tell that, um, well, I'm pretty sh Well, actually, maybe not. Hang on a sec. Yes, that's right. Okay. So yeah, he does spot a couple of my units there. He spots my... Um, really, I put it to neutral. I shouldn't say unknown anymore. Interesting. There we go. He spots my uh, moan units here. Starts to fire. My guy's only got an auto cannon here. But yeah, I do have a um, couple of uh, Cobras, a couple of Chieftains. Um, Chieftain Mark II's out, uh, mostly just to tank damage. As yeah, so they've got pretty good armor for, uh, for their cost, in my opinion. And yeah, he's going to start shooting at my Kurtz. But yeah, he managed to hide himself there. So yeah, basically, put some um, when units are out in the open, or if they've been spotted, then uh, yeah, they get, get a solid color around uh, their name, as you can see. But yeah, once they get um, into a forest and they're not spotted, then yeah, then they. Uh, Start sort of blinking like that. Speaking of which, what do we have here? I've got uh, fire coming from somewhere or other, I'm not entirely sure where. And there we go, I've also got my fancy um, recon helicopter, which has got exceptional optics, as you can see, compared to the uh, merely good optics of my guys. And yeah, Chieftain's also getting attacked by those ATGMs. He manages to get a nice little shot off, and I believe. Ah, uh, oh, there we go, yep. Yeah. My gazelle revealing his crap as well, my Cobra's starting to shoot him. And yeah, my own uh, ATGM armed units, just crappy little jeeps, starting to shoot at him as well. Although I really should have kept that gazelle around though to actually spot what the hell was going on there. But uh, what can you do? So him, yeah, he sees a few my units around, including the uh, two groups of uh, tower rocket armed units. Yeah, they're just little crappy jeeps as you can see. And, uh, ah, here we go, got a bit more combat happening here. So see that, uh, should close it. Oh, this is... But yeah. Because you know, of course, have morale in this game. Um, yeah, they can get demoralized from stuff just hitting them. And I think, yeah, due to recent changes in the patch, they can even get a bit demoralized just from having shots miss them. I think, although these guys, well, a bit worried and shaken. So there you go. Although that one's going, no, it's not going to get hit. <laughs> not bad. And here we go. He's bringing up his own uh, fancy gunships. And there we go. Yeah, this is basically what he sees at the moment. So Elmo King apparently takes out one of my um, chieftains, and as you can see, he's got a slight edge in uh, points here. But yeah, he has to. Um, well, the first player to reach 1,500 points to be the one to win. But I've got my own out tower units up. And yeah, I start shooting at his um, fancy tanks, which have got their own ATG museums as well. Unfortunately, yeah, the Chieftain's not equipped for that. And here we go. We've got a nice little um, missile versus vis missile battle here. And then, yeah, my tower's basically um, trying to do as much damage as possible to his um, tanks there, managing to take out a few of them. Probably should have just went straight for these... Um, BMPs actually, I think I was actually, was I flanking a bit? Oh no, never mind, they're already facing, uh, oh well, never mind, I guess, yeah, they're already facing uh, my guys there, because yeah, there's also directional arm armor in this game. These are towers, of course, not having any armor anywhere, because they've got, um, well, they're just crappy little jeeps, so there we go, let's see if we can get a nice little close-up of this, and nope, unable to hit them. <laughs> uh, you gotta love that, so yes, uh, ATGM's um, missing all over the place, I think it's a little bit unrealistic, what the hell, I think, um, Realistically speaking, the ATGMs are meant to be a bit more accurate, but they're meant to be um, less damaging than what they are, because these ones, yeah, they do plenty of, uh, well, have a look at these guys, yeah, they do plenty of um, damage. Their AP power, you can see, is 12, pretty high for um, ATGMs. Although, yeah, for some reason, um, the developers, they decided to actually scale accuracy when it comes... Actually, I'll just see from my view. Huh, interesting. Anyway, yeah, I've also spinning a couple of guys here over there. Yeah, they decided to actually scale um, the accuracy up... Um, in terms of cost and all that for ATGMs rather than damage. So the ATGMs basically do um, pretty much the same amount of damage 
um, across the board, yeah, with slight differences, with um, accuracy uh, being uh, the deciding factor, so pay more to get but more accurate AG ATGMs rather than more damaging ATGMs, which is a bit of a bizarre design choice in my opinion, given that, um, well, given that, they, yeah, they can, they're still powerful, which means, yes, they sort of end up being more uh, chance-based weapons, but, uh, oh well, whatever. In the case, yeah, I decided to try to expand to the Echo Point, which I think is a bit of a moot point, because I've got some... Um, I can actually see, damn it, I can't see how many um, resource points I've got, but I'm pretty sure I've got, yeah, plenty this game, so it's not, pr probably not really much need to expand there. Also, yeah, do you have encroaching uh, enemy helicopter of some sort? So I'm assuming yeah, it's just um, another variant of the MI-24, yeah, just the uh, basic variant, MI-24A. Not such a shaved little unit, um, and yeah, the best going to beat the, beat the crap out of my uh, little jeep unit there. Oh, well, well, two jeeps, I believe. Could it's also being forced to retreat and also setting up this guy as well. Oh, there we go. Also, his own armor, armored recon doing a bit of damage there. My own uh, command um, vehicle barely managed to survive that somehow. Not sure how. And yeah, he sends his um, helicopters a bit too close, actually. As you can see, my uh, chieftains and Kutz's uh, armored recon is actually managing to shoot at him. One with an also cannon, the other presumably with. Uh, MMG, and yeah, managing to do a bit of damage there, but yeah, packed helicopters have generally got so much more health, and yeah, a bit armored, a bit more armored compared to their um, NATO counterparts, but yeah, he does um, start to shoot back at my own guys though, and that guy is out of here, bam. He also captures my um, supply trucks, um, because yeah, the supply trucks can actually capture this game by uh, military units, and as a response, okay, my trap is also back here, and um, they've got pretty long range um, for anti air. Units, but the yeah, problem is that the uh, helicopters are pretty sure just too far away to actually. Where are they? I can't actually stick them to the, check the range. Oh, well, too bad. And yeah, it looks like we also have a bit of a uh, skirmish happening there. Unfortunately, not being able to cover it. But yeah, as you can see, we do have a nice little uh, level of detail there. Flames and all that. Nice indeed. But yeah, I'm doing a bit of damage to his uh, helicopters there, and yeah, managed to uh, establish a bit of a lead. But yeah, still going at neck and neck, and yeah, he's deciding to move forward. Me having to send my chaparrals back, and yeah, finally coming in with VABs. I think they've just got some um, regular infantry in them, so I think that's just yeah to clear out these forests, just in case he's got he, in case if he's got other things hiding out there. And nothing else happening there. He's got more Streltsy there. Oh, okay, they must have been in the um, APCs. Yeah, what does he have incoming? Armored Recon, T-64 is some more basic um, tanks without the uh, ATGMs. And there we go, here come my Shashu Shasur's famous with their Shadirs and uh, yeah, Laws as well to try to take out his fancy um, Armored Recon. I managed to get him to route, so he's panicked and everything, but uh, yeah, unfortunately um, he comes back for another go. Although for some reason he's actually getting really close to my guys and they managed to launch a couple of rockets. To cause a bit of a damage there. Speaking of which, there we go, let's pause. Might just change the um, sound a bit. There we go, because yeah, this is the first time I've uh, recorded a game here, so of course the sound settings have to be a bit different. Thankfully, thankfully it does just have a single master volume, so I just have to um, put that down a bit. And there we go. Because yeah, it's not too bad when you're zoomed out, but when you're zoomed in, especially then. Um, yeah, it can make a bit of difference there. And yeah, that guy's still. Managing to survive barely, still got um, a little bit of <coughs> sorry, a little bit of health left, and as here, not much happening. So yeah, you don't want to put your caught out in the open like this, and I believe I've actually spotted them as well. So oh no, I haven't. I'll be damned. Maybe the, this tree line is blocking the view a bit. I'm not entirely sure. Oh well, in either case, yeah, his uh, fancy recon is slowly getting taken out. And interesting. He's got the Buritano, which is a short-range MLRS, uh, multiple uh, rocket system, multiple launch rocket system, something like that. Yeah, multiple rocket launch vehicle, it says it there. Um, pretty good for short ranges. It's only got 3.5 kilometer range, which means it's too far to actually make a difference here. I think he's only got that in case if I try to rush him with um, spammy uh, NATO units. Huh. Which I uh, don't think I do. I think I only send out a, um, a Delta Force squad, which won't come out until later on, it seems. Interesting. There we go, got a couple of things here. Got a Vulcans for anti-aircraft. Oh, they're not so shoveled against infantry and light vehicles, though. Also brought up my uh, supply trucks, which have got um, next to no supplies left. We need to get those back to the uh, to the FOB, the Forward Operating Base, which is yet yeah, just used to um, store supplies at your main, at your um, 
main area, I suppose you could say. Oh, there we go, he's starting to scout as well. As you can see, I've t captured this point. I've got, um, well, basically, ports. I've got ATGM Milans, they're the uh, anti tank guys. Got recon uh, infantry, which I would usually better than vehicles. Yeah, optics are very good. Also got um, anti air teams behind them, and yeah, the uh, command armor behind them as well, right in the uh, rear there. So it's a bit of an, ob an obvious position to hide your guys in. Actually, there's not really any places to hide your guys at all there, but um, yeah, as you can see, I uh, think I fired a missile off. It is armored recon managed to get him to uh, retreat there. Also, looks like I'm making a bit of an overture with my uh, tower jeeps there. Don't really see them doing too much damage though. And else. Nope. This Kurtz I really should have um, sent him back into the forest here because yeah, usually he'd want you guys to be hanging around uh, well tree lines, forest that sort of stuff so that they're not spotted as uh, easily and so they have a bit of cover but uh, yeah we're not going to do that. Oh well. So yeah a bit quiet at the moment and uh, yeah. Yeah the good thing about this game as well, um, well it depends on how you look at it. So you, uh, can be a bit daunting at times but yeah there's actually multiple variants to multiple units as well so there's many variants of um, the uh, T80 series, the T64s, T72s, I think they are, etc., etc., as well as yeah, various other vehicles and uh, infantry as well. So having um, yeah, well, and it's, and it's more than just a difference of um, you know having been slightly better or worse. Someone actually have yeah, rather different weapons as well. So anyway, here's my um, Huey coming in with uh, presumably Delta Force guys, and I think I mentioned a bit of damage. Problem is though. The special forces that are deployed in this Huey are pretty expensive themselves. I don't really re recall if they um, pay for themselves, but yeah, do have a bit of a lead at the moment. Although, of course, the game won't end until um, one of us reaches uh, 1500 points. And yeah, it's actually possible to get um, draws in this game as well, so I might um, be seeing uh, some of. Uh, well, actually, I do have one, at least one replay where um, I got, managed to get a draw with my opponent somehow, which is very close. I thought uh, maybe he probably would have won by a narrow margin, but. Uh, well, it counted me as having a draw, so why not? And there we go, that's, um, here's the uh, MD Jupiters, the uh, supply trucks being caught in the mud here, so just um, needing to unstick themselves there. The time scale's a bit different, um, oh, crap, so much of that unit. But anyway, the, ti the um, time scale's a bit different to this unit, um, in that, uh, yeah, well, not different, but really short, so in certain respects, um, in, as, uh, yeah, various units can get repaired and resupplied very quickly. It's a bit like Men of War, actually. Um, you can have a whole crush of tanks. They can get repaired in uh, several minutes, when in reality it will take hours and hours of work to repair um, various things with tanks like tracks and, uh, and turrets and all that. But anyway, got a bit of an attack by my uh, opponents here, and nothing much happening here, so we'll just focus on what's happening in uh, a closer angle here. And uh, yeah, he's, he's really um, throwing quite a few things at this flag point, and with good reason, yeah, I don't really have too much to support here. Although, thankfully, my uh, chassels chassels chasse 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 are. Um, Starting to prove, uh, well, prove their worth here with um, fancy laws there, because yeah, laws have got very um, limited ranges. You can see 700 meters, but yeah, they're pretty good if um, when fighting in forests and all that gets vehicles and all that. And yeah, of course, if ambushing vehicles in forests, normally you don't want to send your vehicles this close. For some reason it didn't. I'm not sure why. And my Chaparral, unfortunately, is completely out of missiles. I think it managed to shoot down a couple of helicopters, but yeah, it does have a couple of those basic uh, MI-24As up as well, which is going to be a pain in the ass. Also, should probably send in my Famas a bit uh, closer as well to try to take out this Montaleski because yeah, they still should be able to attack them while using the uh, forests but uh, yeah, for whatever reason I decide just to keep him in the forest for the time being and yeah, I suppose they're not being uh, revealed nope, so yeah, he can't see anything else in my forest there Chapadon is to be sent back of course wow, I even got two more Chapadons coming up, wow really uh, probably over overdid that a bit speaking of which, my Delta forces are here as well here we go, starting to fire a couple of their Carl Gustavs but yeah, against cheap um, well, look at this cheap ZSU 57s. I think they're like 15 or 20 points each. Um, I don't think they're really going to pay themselves just by taking them out. But yeah, they do manage to do a bit of damage there. And are they going to take out these BMPs? Actually, probably not. Oh, I think they got one of them. But yeah, then they got taken out by these crowd loads of motor which is the basic sort of infantry. So yeah, they kind of failed a bit. And uh, I think I'll be sending yeah, my Huey back as well. And yeah, we've of course got this um, attack here as well. So Chapel are going to fire. Mm, don't know. Probably not. Where's, where the hell is the other Chaparral? I thought I was sending another ch unit of Chaparrals here, but apparently not. Now, yeah, well, in the case, yeah, I do have my uh, guys in the forest here. They got a couple of those um, Lorax or just those um, anti uh, anti 
round rockets or anti armor rockets. And there we go, Chapadol finally firing and getting resupplied by the Jupiter at the same time. Which is just as well because it only has like bloody eight rockets, so that's four rockets each. But yeah, the reason I think I picked it was because, yeah, it has incredible range. Which um, isn't exactly uh, represented too well here due to the fact that, yeah, they're firing from forests and, yeah, the trees will be blocking their side of their range a bit. But, um, yeah, so now they can't fire at all. Because yeah, bloody trees in the way, which gets kind of annoying, but oh well. Also had a unit get lost here, not entirely sure how, but so yeah, it's how's slowly, slowly trying to um, work their way through uh, enemies' units. And yeah, as you can see, it's a bit of a long-range uh, rocket battle there. So, yeah, it looks like I'll be sending it back as they're out of rockets. There we go, Motostreski is finally attacking my guys there. I think my Chashu's fun, this should get a, um, an advantage over them. 801, 501, something. Yeah, I think they should. Still, it's going to be a bit of a close battle, as you can see. Both of them, uh, yeah, trading uh, a few shots here and there. And there we go, me finally managing to beat them, but only barely, though. Only barely, my god, man. And yeah, they've still got a couple of rockets, though, so hopefully I can ambush these guys. And there we go. We've got some um, crappy uh, Leopard, Leopard tanks. Um, they're the 1A1s, so they're incredibly cheap ones. I think they're almost as cheap as the. Um, yeah, just about as cheap or slightly as cheaper than the um, T-55s that um, Warsaw Pact gets. And yeah, funnily enough, I actually also get the... Um, oh, there we go, that's very nice. Yeah, the, the uh, Warsaw Pact actually gets the um, T-34-85s in this game as well, which is kind of quite kind of cute. I think they also get an ASU-85 and an um, SU-122, um, both of Well, all those uh, World War II tanks, of course, being uh, probably upgraded a bit. Um, for the modern battlefield, it's kind of funny to see them. Although I don't really use them myself as the uh, packed. But so uh, yeah, you can certainly see how they uh, might have a bit of a use there. Oh, and here we go, the Buritano is actually being used. I'll be damned. Is it the same Buritano? No, it's a different one. So it's actually using them there. A bit of a waste in my opinion as, um, yeah, my guys are pretty well separated and I didn't really have much left in the forest, but he probably didn't know that. Jupiter is also exhausting themselves of supplies and all that, while the Chaparral got a couple of rockets there, but at the same time, yeah, as you can see, he's got next to no health there. Famous could probably do with a couple more rockets here and there, and yep, as you can see, I'm still leading, but only narrowly, though. Things could really um, change very, very, very quickly, to say the least. And here we go, here come the Motostraskis. And yeah, generally, yeah, you, don't, you really wouldn't want to use um, infantry out in the open like this. Um, well, um, with the possibility of maybe... Um, some sort of close support, but um, yeah, even then, he would have been probably better off trying to keep them to the tree lines and all that. Because yeah, I'm pretty sure I actually see them. Oh, oh there we go. Seeing one of them, saying unknown, but I can tell that it's infantry, I just don't know what kind of infantry. And. At some point, I'll get artillery, I'm not entirely sure when, but anyway. In any case, yeah, my uh, town's starting to uh, trade a few shots as well. Yeah, two, um, two units of four. Uh, Tau guys trading a few shots. Just do a bit of damage there. So yeah, ATGM is pretty useful in this game. I mean, it's not like tanks are not useful, but the thing is you have to be a bit careful of how you use them. Because <clears throat> yeah, they can take a few shots here and there, but um, yeah, ATGM is going to be pretty uh, devastating. But uh, yeah, at the same time, if you, for example, send in a few cheaper vehicles just to absorb all those rockets, um, then yeah, send in tanks behind them. And if you just keep pressing on your tanks, then yeah, you can just... Uh, Usually um, overrun uh, ATGM uh, positions or at least force them to retreat. With uh, the use of tanks, and yeah, tanks themselves, of course, um, yeah, the shots impact much more quickly than uh, those slow missiles that you see there. So yeah, I suppose yeah, it's just a matter of uh, what you want there. So in any case, yeah, I do have a couple of lep um, leopard tanks here, chasseurs, chasseurs, as well as uh, chapadors, Vulcans. Don't know really if I really should have bothered with that. Um, or even sending in a couple more Jupiters. Interesting. And there we go, finally the towers um, starting to shoot a bit against these armoured recons. So, come on, let's see. That. Ouch, that was rather nasty. Oh well. And wow, look at those bloody rockets just going all over the place. Bloody ridiculous. These guys are empty anyway, probably should be retreating them. But yeah, thankfully I do have a couple more towers here to uh, do a bit more damage, as you can see. And he's actually starting to send his Motostraskis out. And here we go, I got my own uh, self propelled artillery here. And uh, yeah, actually, artillery is relatively. Well, it's because of the way the points are handled and all that, but, but um, yeah, artillery, um, the most basic of artillery is relatively cheap in this game, so you can actually afford to send it a bit uh, closer to your opponent, but in either case, yeah, as you can see, I'll just be um, using it to shoot his Montestrovskis, and uh, yeah, well, as you can see, we'll uh, just see how that uh, goes. There we go, very nicely done, if I do say so. So, 
Yeah, problem is, though, yeah, my artillery is shooting on, sh on moving targets, which can be a bit tricky, but they're only infantry anyway, so. And I think I actually um, told my artillery to shoot um, uh, at a particular area rather than to shoot them themselves, and I think, yeah, just aimed a bit uh, ahead of the um, Monster Stills, because you can see I'm just taking a bit of damage there. And yeah, if I, th I think if I didn't do that, then I think my guys would have just been completely screwed. I think one of my, um, yeah, the vehicle that was transporting these guys is, uh, is dead, and uh, yeah, thankfully my guys do have cover in this uh, tree line here, but uh, yeah, there's more Stoskis in numbers, they can still do quite a bit of damage, and I've only got a couple of infantry here, no dedicated, um, like, rifleman squads, just uh, specialised infantry which come in small squads and have crappier rifles usually. But uh, yeah, as you can see, the artillery certainly managed to do a bit of damage there, and yeah, even creating a couple of craters there. Unfortunately, unlike Men of War, it doesn't create cover for infantry though, and what the hell's my artillery? Oh, there we go. There nice little view of artillery fire coming in. And Monte Stelsk is also trying to get a bit closer. I think he probably should just try to get himself into the uh, tree line as quickly as possible in order to um, get cover, but uh, there we go. There we go, there's some nice uh, direct shots of the artillery there, even causing uh, them to get stunned a couple to routes. So yes, getting a bit of action to say the least. Points climbing uh, steadily for both uh, sides, but as you can see, I uh, yeah, do still have a bit of a uh, bit of a lead there. And yeah, I haven't lost a single squad of infantry. I lost some um, individual guys, as you can see, but uh, and the vehicle transport. But uh, yeah, I think I uh, haven't actually lost the um, infantry themselves. And yeah, got a bit of action happening there. We'll just see how bit of, I think there was also something happening here as well. Let's see. Wow, more monsters is coming in. Uh, Kurtz is going to get routed then. I think I lost my gazelle at some point as well. I can't remember how though. And, oh, there we go. Got another enemy attack happening here, but I think I'm a bit more prepared with um, tanks. Chaparol's famous. Jupiter's also providing a little resupply radius there, as you can see. And the yeah, Amortis as you can see, has been cleared up there. And I think I'll also be sending in uh, some sort of supplies here as well. So, not a shabby. Kurtz taking a bit of damage there. I'm not dead yet though, thankfully. And there are my towers, there we go. Probably should just um, kept them well, a little bit behind the front lines and just uh, sent the trucks to and from to resupply them, but what the hell in this case. I, just, I think I was just trying to uh, get them to retreat in general, and uh, yeah, let's see, not much else happening. I also got an attack there, I also got an attack here by Motosotrovskis. I think I sent the uh, Vulcans, um, yeah, they're just anti-aircraft artillery, they can, well, basically AA units can the uh, cannot normally aim at uh, ground units unless they're, you know, they're using missiles, of course. I think I just sent them as a response to the uh, infantry by the time they arrived, of course. The infantry threat was uh, long destroyed, but anyway. Kind of got a bit of an attack here, and my Chaparral is shooting those missiles. It's incredibly inaccurate, yeah, 306. But yeah, it does um, have a really long range and all that, so, and, uh, which comes in handy, actually, because I think these guys are just about engaging at the longest possible range. These Vulcans also managing to get a couple of... Um, Shots off as well. Wow, I'm like really getting massacred there. But uh, yeah, still got a bit of an advantage um, against uh, Pact, as you can see. But wow, god damn. Those helicopters are really going to town on my guys. He's got um, two here and another two there, I think. And Chaparral just can't seem to get a single bloody shot off. Very annoying. Um, but at the same time, yeah, you get what you pay for. It's relatively cheap and yeah, does have an incredible range. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, not being able to kill a single helicopter there, I think. And there we go, I managed to, well, I sent a couple of artillery shots there, I think I was probably shooting, um, well, certainly not shooting ahead of the enemy, that's for sure, but there we go, finally uh, getting a couple of shots near them, but yeah, same time not really doing too much damage there, Jupiter's getting captured, of course, uh, guys, now they're, now they're commie, commie Jupiters, basically, <laughs> but, uh, hopefully I'll be adjusting my artillery fire at some point, looks like too late in that case, but yeah, there we go, got a few shots, starting to land a bit closer to them. Very unfortunate, but uh, yeah, probably could have um, got a few more chaparrals out. Uh, but oh well, what can you do? What can you do? His opponent's still deciding to leave his Montesteros here, and I think I actually see them the entire. Oh, no, actually, no, I don't. Okay, must be too far away or something. I'm surprised that, that my uh, tower thing doesn't spot them. Slightly raised train and all that. Oh well, what can you do? Also, this command vehicle. Was that the attack? I'm not really sure. Interesting. Yeah, in any case, yeah, artillery not really uh, hitting much at the moment. I don't think I actually really changed the position too much. No, it's still trying to fire uh, around there, I think. Took a bit of damage there. And there we go, there we go. I think I just decided to set up another defensive line here instead. Of a couple of towers. Uh, what the hell are these? Recons are, yes, just recon infantry to provide vision. And what do I have in here? Okay, so that's just the... Um, 
We got two good VABs here. Ah, oh, okay, so there'll be ATGM armed infantry. And I suppose I've still got the Spay Huey, which um, I think I don't really do much with uh, at all. Speaking of which. Oh, okay, I decided to send in a. Uh, oh, I can, I can actually move that. Oh! Wait a minute. Huh. Interesting. I didn't know I could do that. Hope I didn't just screw up the replay we're doing. I didn't know I could actually move stuff around there. Or maybe not. Bizarre. Very bizarre. No, in any case, well, I don't actually has a surprising amount of uh, anti-air guys around here. ZSUs, ZSUs, Cubs. But then again, I think that might actually be somewhat justified, because um, I've had a couple of other games since then where um, the opponents really like to raid, uh, raid your rear lines using uh, aircraft, which I suppose is a legitimate tactic, but um, I guess I didn't quite expect that at different points. So. Well, at times and all that, but anyway. And, and anyway, these uh, towers going to town, and there we go. Minor victory for myself, light man. So, yes, 1,553 points versus 1,304 points. So, pretty close game, but uh, yeah, in my opinion, yeah, worthwhile uh, to cast it, to commentate on it, I should say. So, there you have it. Um, just check what the time is, and yeah, I might be able to get one or more uh, commentaries in. So, there you go. Until next time, this has been uh, David the Bitch, signing off.